In this tutorial, we'll be making fuzz procedurally. It's fascinating that there is a scientific explanation for cuteness, a large rounded head, large eyes, a small nose, and cheeks that look more like cupcakes than anything else. All of these features invoke a sense of cuteness, but if your 3D character already has these features and you want to push its cuteness even further, all you need is a little bit of fuzz. That's why today we're focusing on fuzz and how we can use it to cover any 3D character. With the method presented in this video, you have control over the density of the fuzz. You can adjust the length of the strands that make up the fuzz, as well as the thickness and pointiness of the strands. But most importantly, you can do all of this procedurally, meaning that you can turn this into this without having to worry about each individual strand. And the interesting thing is that you're not limited to generating fuzz only on characters, but you can use the same approach for clothing and give them a warm, fuzzy feeling. This is how I've structured this tutorial so that I can give you the most relevant information in the shortest amount of time. In the first step, we're going to distribute strands of fuzz on an object. In the second step, we're going to trim those strands randomly so that they look more natural. And in the final step, we will make the fuzz more realistic by making the tip of the strands pointy. And all we need to get started are these notes which is already good enough for render and takes us 70% toward the final fuzz effect. The most important note here is the distribute points node, which generates a random distribution of points on the surface of the object given by the object info node. The instance on points node then takes these points and places on each of them a single strand made from a single curve line. This node also makes sure the strands are sticking outward from the surface of the object by using the rotation of the distribute points node. We can use the distribute points node to change the density of the fuzz and drastically change the appearance of our model, while the curve line node lets us change the length of the fuzz strands and make the model look more or less shaggy. Finally, the curve circle node allows us to set the thickness of the strand. But we have a problem here. That is, if we want to increase the number of strands, at some point, Blender will start to lag, which I'm sure I don't have to tell you, is an extremely unpleasant experience. So to avoid this, let's press Shift A to bring up the Add menu and using the search field, find a node by the name Switch. And a conditional node called Is Viewport. Basically, the combination of these two nodes enables us to tell Blender to show only a fraction of all the strands while we are in the viewport, but then show all of the strands when we attempt to render. Now, before we move on, let's add a set material node to set the material for the fuzz. But something seems a bit off. The problem right now is that all the strands of our procedurally generated fuzz have the same length, which makes the effect look a bit unnatural. So to fix this, let's randomly trim down some of the strands. And to do this, again, bring up the Add menu and use the Search field to drop in a Random Value node and a Trim Curve node. On the Random Value node, we can define the length of the shortest and the longest strand of fuzz. However, to make sure these values are interpreted correctly, be careful to choose the Length option on the Trim Curve node. If we compare this new trimmed version to the previous untrimmed one, you can see how much more natural it looks. Just remember that if you want to change the length of the strands, first increase their initial length on the curve line node, and then tweak the maximum and minimum values on the random value node. At this point, we are 90% into achieving the final fuzz effect. The final 10% is to make the tip of the strands pointy. This is rather easy, especially if we make use of a spline parameter node, a map range node, and a set curve radius node. The factor output on the spline parameter node gives us a value between 0 and 1, which respectively represents the base and the tip of each strand. This factor is then passed through the map range node, where it is remapped from 1 to 0, and then handed over to the set radius node, which makes the tip pointy. So now if I zoom in, you can see how we can adjust the thickness along each strand of fuzz using the values on the map range node. 
using this, we can create characters that either look more natural or more artificial, similar to a toy. Here are some examples of what you can achieve with this node setup. And if you want to learn more about procedural methods in Blender, click on this next video. As for this one, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.